Hello, Internet, and welcome to my live reaction for Blue Exorcist, chapter 133.2. That's right, last month's little half-introduction chapter uh, was not all of 133. We have a full-length chapter this month. Uh, but yeah, we lost with our heroes. Uh, Ren and Satan's battle was continuing, though Ren is well aware that he is just the diversion uh, for, for Yukio's group. Um... But even then, Satan's starting to get a little bored of him, which makes Rin kind of nervous, because if he starts getting distracted with other things, that sort of fucks with, with the gang's plan. Meanwhile, we have this little moment with Lucy Yang, who summons this giant fuck-all black dragon to, like, confuse all of the, the lower to mid-rank demons. It's really cool. Uh, and then we check in on Yukio, as he's found a place where he thinks it's the best place to get the shot on, on Satan. So that's where we left off. Let's dive right on in after 133, part two of One Cloth Flutter. And we open with the exact same line that ended last month as Yukio points up to like the, the sort of hills in the distance. The best place to shoot from is on top of those crags. It gives a good field of fire and the rock should provide cover. Furthermore, it's on the leeward side of the rocks and, Domin and Dominus Limit. I always trip on this name. Domin Dominus Limit. Yeah! The Dominus Limitus. Let's just leave it at that. Dominus Liminus' wreckage is nearby, which will cut down on crosswind. Leeward, which is a, a word that here means by the by, um, sheltered from the wind. Okay. Uh, but Neuhaus sort of pushes back, but isn't it too far away? Uh, and Yukio goes on, hmm, what's Devil Banisher's range? Uh, Neuhaus tells him, I observed a dense spread in excess of a 20 meter radius in the one test we could do. Apparently, airflow in Asia does not affect, affect, back, affect black flame. I keep tripping on words today. Um, and Yukio then sort of comments, I see. That's good, but in the worst case, you want to hit within 15 meters of Satan. Uh, and then Yukio gets a little bit more, like, you know, determined here. Dr. Neuhaus, I'm a dragoon, so can I take the shot? Lo rocket launchers aren't very precise, and we can't afford to fail. Uh, but Neuhaus just tells him, no, I've trained with it, so I can handle it. Uh, and Yukio accepts that. He's very sort of willing to go along with what Neuhaus is saying. Um, I don't know. I, it, that doesn't seem entirely... Like, that feels a little new to Yukio, which admittedly he's gone through a great deal of character development in the past uh, six hours in universe time. Um, but anyway, understood. Then I'll be your spotter. And all of you are our flankers, turning to the X, Y, X, Y, and Shora who all give him a yes, sir. And they all sort of you know, salute, give thumbs up, whatever. Uh, and then I think this is Neuhaus's line? Uh, no, this, this is uh, Yukio still. I'll lead the way. Follow me. And the whole group runs um, runs to, to the mountaintop. Uh, but Yukio kind of falters for a bit. I'm not in top condition. Uh, and Shora catches up to him there. Hey, Four Eyes, you're looking wobbly. Can you handle this? Uh, and Yukio kind of brushes her off. I'm fine. But Shora teases, nothing is less believable than, than you saying you're fine. And then she gets ahead of him. Let me lead the way. Stay in back until we get there, you four-eyed wimp. Uh, and... And Yukio then just sort of... Takes that. Alright, you take the lead. And Shora is taken aback at that. Uh, it was just like, this is too weird! Usually you'd say, don't call me a four-eyed wimp, I can do it alone! You should be in crybaby mode by now! I have missed Shora! We have not had, like, present-day Shora since, like, mid-beyond the snow. I've missed her. She's fun. Um, mm. But Yukio, after that big fight with Rin, just acknowledges his own weakness here. Yes, I'm a crybaby, a four-eyed wimp. And Shora is stunned. I can't believe this! What's gotten into you? And then Yukio, like, just turns to her, fully serious here. My apologies. So I saw, I saw this particular panel um, from one of the, one of the BE Tumblr users. Um, and I had assumed, I think for some reason I initially assumed it was Bonnie was talking to. I only saw this one panel where Shora is, like, barely, barely distinct here. Um, but this does call to mind his sort of apology to Bon during the, the bonfire before all this shit happened. Uh, as Yukio, after, you know, after that fight with Rin, is taking responsibility for everything he's done, uh, over the past several years. Uh, and Shora is just stunned. What the? 
Are you pissed off or bummed out? Do you have diarrhea? Where the fuck did that one come from? Uh, and Yukio just tells her, I'm not angry or depressed. My bowels are fine. Oh. Okay, sorry. And Shora just sort of, you know, now, now that Yukio has told her he, that he's okay, just accepts all that. And everything's cool. Follow me. And they all dash out. Uh, Yukio declares, y yes, ma'am. Uh, and as they're, they're running by, Yukio sort of watches the battle. I'm counting on you, Rin. And then we cut back to uh, the octopus that, that Satan's hanging out on. Um, so I think this might be Satan's scream, cry, and this glup, glup, glup sound. Um, oh, no, that might be like the, oh, oh, I see what's going on here. This, is, this may or may not be Satan's octopus. I think he was on an octopus. Uh, but it's being affected by Haylong's smoke that's confusing all the mid-tier demons. And so it's like whacking itself with its tentacles. And Satan might be on there upset about that. There's some sort of something going on, like its for forehead area as an octopus. It doesn't really have a forehead. But we do get this real cool panel of Haylong, uh, sort of like floating in the air, smoke billowing from its mouth, sort of obscuring a lot of its features, but just, you know, hovering over a field of demon corpses. Uh, and Lucy's also there controlling things, it looks like, or having some kind of light-based attack. Uh, either way, one of the, the grunts just comments, the smaller demons disappeared. And I think this is, Ar this is Arthur. Now, attack! And all of the exorcists go, and there's Egan there. Whoa! And he's like got this like water bubble around himself. I love Egan. he's so adorable. No, don't! I don't want to fight! I think this is Iblis calling, Egan. Uh, and she summons more of her moose spells. You maggot! Don't touch Egan! Um... And she looks up at, at Hei Long, I think. You did this. I'm gonna have to roast ya. And then I think she does some sort of fire attack on Hei Long. Lucy was on Hei Long, it seems like. I sort of missed that initially. I thought she was on like some sort of like stump or something, but we do see there is like a stump of a horn on Hei Long's head, but I think that's where Lucy is. Uh, so Lucy jumps off of Hei Long as he sort of fire attacks, um, hit, hit, hit the dragon. Uh, and then she mutters something that's not translated. That might be Chinese, because uh, Lucy is a Chinese character, I think. Right? Yang sounds like a Chinese last name to me, but what do I know? Um, and we explain why it's not translated into English. The Japanese translators don't speak Chinese. Maybe. Either way, she does that incantation and throws her uh, her these like knives, black claws, uh, and they. Head towards Iblis, who's not terribly concerned. Hmm. Too late. And she blows them up. Uh, except one of them does make it through and cuts her. Like, not, not a deep cut, but like on her arm here. What? And one of them makes it into Agen's water bubble. They weren't all going for Iblis. Oh. For Agen. Uh, and I think it's Astaroth is the mushroom one, right? Let me see if I have that right. Um, I think it's Astaroth that's the mushroom. Um... Uh, I think so. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, that is Astaroth. The wiki just had him in his more human form, SSE, so I had to, like, read a bit. But yeah, he's just a mushroom now, who's also hit by the knife. Um, and Iblis thinks, what just happened? Or not thinks, she says out loud. And Lucy, who's now, like, back on Haylong, it seems, tells her, Holy needles come from the crystallization of our Mumahel, and bear a coating of specially formulated black flame, causing anything they graze to fall unconscious. So I'm guessing that it didn't hit Iblis because she's still conscious. Or no, no, I think it might. I think she's about to fall unconscious. Uh, oh yeah, she has this like really badass line there. So I wonder, do demon kings dream? And Iblis just rages, why you decrepit witch? And then we, we leave them alone to come back to Rin, who's just going at it. Satan, 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 slash! Just, oh, like, you know, long-range projectile sword slashes. Satan, 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 over and over again, repeating Satan. Uh, and Satan laughs. He, 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 Satan slash that paltry thing. Ha, ha, ha. He's just making fun of his name. Um, and Rin, I'm not sure he's telling the truth here, just bursts out, I'm, I'm not, not the one who named it. Because I thought he was, or maybe it might have been named during the Kyoto arc as, like, the gang was sort of roasting him. Uh, it's been a while since I, since I read and or watched that arc. Mm. 
Either way, Satan, like, picked, he, he's been on the ground for a bit. He picked himself up. Let me show you how it's done. Satan slash! And he just slashes with, like, his claws alone. But more powerful than what Rin's got, I'm assuming. Yeah, because that one little claw slash tears the ground up to the point that Rin is sent flying. Uh, and he's, you know, lo- lost his balance. Wah! And it also cuts hey long. That's a damn good panel, Kato. That is a damn good panel. Um, it's a full two-page spread, uh, just focusing on Hey Long as we see, you know, like like Hey Long has kind of been in this sort of like long figure eight pattern, and just cut right up the middle, including through like its jaw. So Hey Long is dead. There goes that plan. Uh, and Heilong falls as Lucy comments, Ah, Satan! And Satan comments, Ah, so you're its owner. What a small target. But let me see if I can hit you. And he throws something, either another, like, projectile flame thing or, like, an actual object. But he does. He does hit Lucy square in the chest. Um, so that's not good. That is definitively not good. Uh, I'm not sure if Lucy just dies like that. She's, like, Lucy is just in the right place where her death would not radically alter the show, but also, like, raise the stakes for Satan's strength in a really, like, effective way. You know, we, we, we spent all of part one establishing she's, like, this powerful arch knight, and then Satan takes her down. I could see her dying here. Um... But she also might not. I don't know. Uh, and Rain is just stunned at, at the Arch Knight falling. Um, and Satan cheers as Lucy falls. Gotcha! Yeah, ha, ha, ha. I'll call that Satanic Kebab! Yeah, ha, 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 ha. Uh, this is great. No matter how much power I use, I barely feel it. My body moves easily, and I can use my strength to overpower anything. So, yeah, hopefully, like, hopefully, Neuhaus is. What's it called? The Devil Banisher, right? Uh, yeah, the Devil Banisher can, like, take Satan out. But, like, the way he's being built up here, the sort of, like, un- incomparable strength, I'm not sure that will work. We'll have to see. Uh, as Satan, like, flames spewing from his mouth and just grins, there is no greater joy in this world. And Rin, I don't, I'm not sure Rin actually knows Lucy's name here because he just dashes off that poor old lady. Uh, which also was a bit of Rin forgetting the plan, because he's, he's supposed to be focusing on Satan here. Um, but Satan is annoyed at Rin's departure. Ah! Uh? And then we hear this whip sound effect, uh, as a bunch of ropes surround and, like, bind Satan. I doubt it'll be effective. Uh, I can't quite work out who did that. Take that! Oh, it's, it's Beelzebub! Right, because we, we learned that Beelzebub was going to go go fight Satan last chapter. This is my pet. Buy all the spider kings, A-dimensional webs. Don't interact with impacts in any dimension. I will say, I hate bugs in a general sense, right? Like, they're, my, my apartment, I consistently keep finding, like, spiders all over the place and creeping the fuck out. But that's a cute fucking spider right there, guys. <laughs> that thing's adorable. That is an adorable spider. And I hope he knows I love him. Because I do. Um... But either way, that's also an effective strategy against Satan. That, like, if they can't really be, uh, if they can't really be impacted, if you can't like tear against them, then Satan can't break free. Uh, but then Satan just like glares at Beelzebub, and Beelzebub panics. Pia, sorry, Papa. Chia, who do you take me? And he tries to like break free, but he can't. He's a little shocked. That, like, there's something that he can't break. Prime. And then he gives this. Or no, this is this is someone else's chance. Primeval one. The foundation is Aziz. The elements are fire and poison. Uh, and we see, I think this is Satan, who's, something's happening to his face. Compressed air? And it's, it's, uh, it's, we see lightning and Osceola and someone's foot, one guess who that is, open a space of truth. And whoever's foot that is, definitely, definitely not Arthur, uh, announces, repent. And it is Arthur. These shallow and crude shadows, wearing skins hiding their true selves as they seek to annihilate human beings, the lords of all things. Okay, um, 
I do kind of want to take a moment. Like, like, okay. So, we've established that demons are sentient, right? Mm. And so, we've we never really seen this sense of, like, a human supremacy movement, right? It, like, like, we've seen that it's possible to ally with demons. The reason that they fight demons is because the demons that the exorcists fight are threats to humanity. But then there's this human beings, the lords of all things... Uh, which doesn't seem like like a chant or an incantation. It seems like Arthur being like you know almost bigoted, which might be just like to set up the drama whenever Arthur has to accept that he's a Lucifer clone uh, because he's not really human. But like I don't know. I'm I'm curious if Kato is going to go somewhere with like a human supremacy movement. We see him. It seems a little late in the series for that. I don't know. Um, either way, they seek to unite like human beings, the lords of all things. Such iniquity is an abomination. And he has his sword, and he, like, cuts his hair with his sword. Um, Calibur, lend me your strength. And Calibur sort of declares, Woohoo, you got it, I love this. And Calibur, you know, it seems like a bright light shines from its hilt, and we see, like, almost lightsaber sort of thing from the opposite direction of, of the blade. Angelic slasher thunderbolt. And it shoots this like crossbow bolt um, out from, from Arthur straight towards Satan. You can't move. And it's taking some kind of damage from whatever lightning did. Uh, and it seems to cut him right down the middle. Uh, but not for long, because it does look like he reforms. Um, maybe? I'm not sure, actually. Does he reform? Because we have this panel the, at the end of 33, where it looks like, like, it looks like Satan's initially cut at the top of 33, and then we see only a tiny hole that I think is through Satan of Arthur, Lightning, and, and Osceola. And so it looks like that hole is reforming. But I don't know, because like the reaction afterwards, Satan's not there. And we see Iblis uh, just react, no way! And uh, um, Aegon is unconscious. He's, he's already been hit by the, the claw. Astaroth is handling it somewhat decently, but, like, not dealing with whatever just happened to Satan, though. Because, like, it does sort of seem like Satan... He can't have crumbled. A, he's the main antagonist. Uh, though I suppose, you know, it wouldn't be the first time Satan has died. Uh, but B... We spend all this time, like, building up what Yukio and Neuhaus are going to do to just, like, have Satan fall here is weird. Um, and I'm sure it somehow ties in with all of, like, all of, of Arthur's deep-seated mental problems dealing with all of the, the Lucifer revelations. You know, maybe by killing... Like, he, he's breaking the plan because if he kills Satan, uh, he can prove that he's not a demon or something. Though I think the interesting, I think what's going to end up happening, though, I think Satan is going to like, regenerate, even if he hasn't done it yet. Uh, but the problem is, Arthur has, by, by like Satan disintegrating, he is free of the webs. So now all of Beelzebub's plans fell through because Arthur broke the plan. That's my theory. Um, anyway, as, as, as the Demon Kings react, uh, Arthur just goes on, Shadow must bow before the strength of light. And Lightning, almost like teasingly, what do you call that? Arthur August Angels, Holy Light Dissension. And that's where we leave off to be continued. See you in a month. Uh, okay, so there's some good stuff. This is a damn fun chapter. Uh, it's largely an action-based one, with the exception of the first and maybe the last scene. It's largely just some cool fights, uh, some great art. I keep looking at that fucking Haylong panel, uh, that two-page spread. That's just gorgeous. Um, like, like there, you can make a point of criticism with Kato, how sometimes she'll, like, release a chapter and a handful of panels will just be sketches. Like, she almost ran out of time or something. Uh, that was clearly not the case this month. Uh, this is one of the more, most gorgeous, like, single panels the series has done in a long time. It looks really fucking good. Just, like, pure artistic merit. Um, mm. But anyway, uh, onto the chapter itself. We see a bit more of, like, the ramifications of, of Yukio's 
development. He's a lot less sort of headstrong, a lot less, you know, rushing in and in his own way. Not the sort, He was never the hyperactive sort like Rin, but like he's more willing to follow orders. He's like, yeah, there are, are you know, I, I have my plans, but I'm not always going to be the best here. Uh, and he sort of like sits back and like acknowledges, um, um, or like, like just sort of accepts Shora's bullying, which is interesting. Uh, but it does, it doesn't seem like that's building towards anything new. This feels like the result of building towards something in the past, like what we've seen all through the early parts of Of One Cloth. Like I said before, I'm still really, really confused why we're still calling it Of One Cloth, uh, given that it seemed to be referring to Rin and Yukio. Um, but I don't know. Uh, beyond that, most of the chapter is just some fun fights, uh, as, as Lucy makes her move against the Demon Kings and does good work in stopping them. Though Iblis and Astaroth aren't quite out yet, Aegon is. Um, however, she does pay a hefty price for that, because it sure seems like Satan kills her. Like, again, it's, it's a manga and she might be fine, this isn't like, you know, this isn't this is the sort of series like Titan where if someone seems dead, they're probably dead. Um, so, like, maybe she's okay, though I doubt Haylong is, um, but, like, she's at the very least out of the fight. Her black claws are not being able to be used, Haylong is no longer, like, like, it's good that Haylong did what it did already, so that the smaller demons are already gone, um, but either way, we then sort of see Satan, like, reveling in his power, and... I, I wish we had a moment more to have him, like, really sort of deal with having that power taken away by Beelzebub so quickly. You know, he, he has this panel of, like, reveling in the power, and right then he gets caught by Beelzebub. And before he can really react to the fact that he can't move, we have all the stuff with Lightning, or with Angel, more like. Um, and that, again, like I sort of alluded to earlier, is also maybe a character moment, as, like, you know, if, if Satan just respawns now free of the webs, Arthur fucked up. Arthur fucked up their best chance, because he... I don't know, doesn't, doesn't, you know, wants to get rid of any association he might have with demon kind if he really is a Lucifer clone. And I forget if the, if the going impression is that, Luc is that, you know, is Arthur, does Arthur genuinely not believe he's a Lucifer clone, or does he know and just doesn't want to accept it? I forget exactly where he is right now in his, his personal character arc. Uh, but it's not healthy, given what we know about him. And I do think that, like, that's going to end up fucking everyone over. That Satan will respawn or regenerate or something. Um, and no longer bound by Beelzebub and Bale. Um, because <laughs> Arthur did this. And with Beelzebub now sort of terrified of Satan, I'm not sure that Beelzebub will do that again. Um, anyway, lots of fun stuff here from the fighting standpoint and a character standpoint. And also, Bale is just adorable, guys. Bale is so cute. I love him. I, I want a Bale. I, I, I don't like spiders, but I really want a Bale plushie. Uh, so yeah, with that said, I'm going to leave this video off here. Hope you all enjoyed the chapter and the video itself. If you did, feel free to leave me a like or subscribe or, you know, do whatever makes you happy, you know? And as always, your life is your own, okay? Bye!